Hey everybody, it's great to see you today. Welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we're walking through the Bible in a year. Today is September 29th. It is great to see you today. And I thought we could come outside and have our Bible study on the porch today. It's a beautiful day when I'm taping this and I thought it would be a nice change of pace. Today we're going to talk about something that's difficult to do. However, it's necessary to do. Oftentimes in our life, the things that are the hardest are the most important, are they not? You know, for me, it's difficult to get ready, get myself presentable, makeup, hair. Seems I can never be, I'm never fully in love with my hair, but many of you women can attest to that. It is very difficult to get dressed, to study, to prepare as consistently as I need to. However, I honestly think this Bible study, based on what you tell me and the feedback that you give me of how it's changing your life and how it's helping you get into good study routines, it might just be, even though it's one of the hardest things for me to do, it might just be the most important thing that I'm doing right now. So I just want to, again, encourage you to stick with me. We have just just started. We're about a week into the New Testament and I just want to give you encouragement and to remind us that the Word does not return void. Every time we study the Lord will meet us and He will meet us where we are and He will give us a blessing and a word for that day. So I pray that you are blessed by this lesson today which we've entitled A Call to Discipleship. I don't know if you've ever studied Jesus and the disciples before, but when you really study discipleship and how Jesus called the 12 disciples, you often come away understanding something very different from the expectation that you had going into it. We suppose, at least in my growing up, I spent years, decades, supposing that when Jesus met the disciples and he said, come follow me, remember the scripture says they dropped their nets and they went with him, that I had just assumed in, you know, in my cursory reading that they didn't know him. It was a miraculous thing that they were to follow him like that, to, to just drop their careers, leave their families, and to follow Jesus. And to me, that was the mark of the highest calling of a disciple. However, what we're going to talk about today and what we're going to see from really looking at the scriptures more closely and this chronological reading helps us to see is that that's not how it happened at all. It was much, much more common sense, real life in how Jesus called the disciples and in how they came to know that was what they needed to do. So we're going to talk today about when the ministry of Jesus begins. And this is in our Bible today under Mark 1, verse 14, the chapter heading, how it reads, the ministry of Jesus begins. It tells us that the ministry of Jesus actually began after a historic event occurred. Do you know what that was? That was the imprisonment of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the last Old Testament prophet. Okay, even though we read about him in the New Testament, you know that the designations, the chapter designations and the verse designations may or may not be divinely inspired. You know that, right? So a verse might tell us or imply that it's the end of a thought, but it, that's not the end of a thought the way the Holy Spirit read it. So the chapters and the verses in our Bible were actually put there much, much later from when this was written. It was originally written as a, you know, as a, and put together as, as one, uh, one book. And when we have the chapter and, and verse designations, it certainly helps us to read find scripture and memorize scripture but when you're looking at when you're studying it and you're looking at the overall story you have to kind of put that behind you so that you can understand exactly what scripture is saying when John the Baptist was imprisoned it was in to, to some extent a sign to Jesus in his humanity that it was he was supposed to start his ministry and 
he makes two declarations today. I'm at the very beginning of our reading in September 29th under Mark, Mark 1, verse 14 and 15. What were the two things Jesus said? First, he said, he declared that the kingdom is near, and he declared that people should repent and believe in him. Now, what did he mean by the kingdom of heaven is near? I think he was offering the millennial period to the Jews at that time. That is how they understood the messianic kingdom. A king on the throne in Israel, and they had been politically trodden on for years. In fact, the Romans... A foreign government were, were, was ruling them at the time when Jesus walked this earth. They certainly wanted a king. The second thing he was saying was, repent and believe in me. And of course we know that Israel rejected him, and that put off the coming of God's kingdom to some future time. And we know that it's plus 2,000 years because it's been that long and the kingdom has not been ushered in yet on this earth. So even though Israel rejected him at the time, aren't we in a way glad because salvation was then offered to the Gentiles, to us, by the means of the church? Isn't it oftentimes that something that looks so horrific can turn out, God can turn anything into something that is absolutely magnificent. And of course, when we see the cross, that's a picture of the cross. Something that was meant to be so harmful and was so horrible, God turned it into the, the greatest blessing of mankind ever. So if there's anything in your life right now that you feel looks really bad, Stand firm and give it to the Lord because He, this is His specialty. He loves new beginnings. He loves turning things around. And He can do that in your life today. Now let's look at, we need to go back a couple days prior in our reading because actually what we read about today is Jesus being rejected in Nazareth and he's He heals an official son and there are... Other things in Mark 1 verse 16 is the call that the disciples follow Jesus. And this is really, really important to see this because John the Baptist actually was the one that told, we know, three of his disciples, young John, Andrew, and maybe Peter, but we believe that John and Andrew were probably disciples of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, remember that one day in our reading a while back, he actually saw he actually saw Jesus and that's when John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God is coming. So a couple of John the Baptist disciples knew from John that Jesus was the Messiah. So this piqued their interest and their curiosity and they started hanging around Jesus a whole, whole lot more than they had before. In the reading today, when the disciples follow Jesus and Jesus said, come follow me, it's important to understand this was not the first call of the disciples. In fact, we need to look back a couple days when John the Baptist said, Look, behold the Lamb of God, because it was then that John and Andrew, Andrew goes and gets his brother, Simon Peter, and Jesus calls Philip, and then Philip goes and gets Nathaniel. Those five people were probably the first disciples, and they were disciples of Jesus back in our reading a couple of days ago. Today, this follow me is actually not the first call. It's actually after the disciples have spent time, some time. Now, they weren't, they hadn't left their families at this point. They weren't giving Jesus 100% of their time day and night. But 
The disciples did know Jesus. Jesus had given them an opportunity to look into his life, to learn about him, to see about him. So what we want to do today is talk about the fact that it probably didn't happen the way many of us grew up thinking it did, where they didn't know Jesus, and Jesus said, hey, come follow me, and they just miraculously got up and followed a man that they didn't know. That is probably not how it happened. So we have to wonder, did the disciples have some opportunities to see Jesus doing miracles before he even called all of the twelve together? And the answer is probably yes. When we read the account of the wedding at Cana, it says that his mother was there and some of his disciples. Well, if he hadn't called the twelve yet, who, you know, who are the disciples that this passage is referring to? It could very well be these first five. And we also know at that time there were other people, many other people that were following him as a disciple, but yet are never named in the gospel. This could be, A, because they fell away from the faith and turned out not to be a, a true disciple, or B, perhaps there were many, many others that did follow Jesus to the cross, but just for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit has decided not to name them here. Both could be true. Um, when Jesus cleared the temple a couple days ago in our reading, it might have been yesterday or it might have been the day before, when Jesus cleared the temple, that was at Passover. And that was when, remember, he uh, had an encounter with Nicodemus. That was at Passover. In Samaria, when Jesus saw the woman at the well, because of the time that it tells us it was, we think it was probably in the summertime because it was still daylight at that time. So when we piece all these things together, three we, we think that probably two to three months passed between the time John the Baptist told John and Andrew, look, he's the Lamb of God, he's the Messiah, to the time that we're reading about today where Jesus says on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, come follow me. So these men had months, if not longer, but they did have a, a large amount of time that where they would have witnessed Jesus' life, they probably would have gotten to know him a little bit better uh, before he actually called them into full-time discipleship. Now, why are we going to all the trouble to talk about this today? Well, a couple of reasons. The first thing is discipleship is the expected norm of all Christians. You know, we understand the Great Commission in Matthew to be that we are to become disciples, be a disciple, and part of this class is, is helping to do that. But yet, it's also on us to make disciples. And so I am trying to answer that call on my life to make disciples through this Bible study in helping you become a stronger disciple. So what we can understand as Jesus made disciples is that this word follow in the Greek, which actually is pronounced akulotheo, when Jesus said, come follow me, that word in the Greek actually expresses discipleship. Discipleship is a two-way relationship where people covenant with each other to agree in sort of a um, pupil, learner, or master relationship. Jesus, of course, is the master, and the disciples were the pupils. So as we go about our day answering the call to make disciples... We have to study, show ourselves approved, and become a disciple, right, from Jesus. But also, making disciples requires that we simply would call on people in our life that know us, can testify to the integrity of our own lives, and that might be willing to study under us. And this is the call of a Christian today is that we would enter into covenant relationships with other people, people that we know, people that we are close to, and that we can model what the Christian life looks like and share our faith with others and help others to develop a strong personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself. 
that is the call of the Christian in the world today. So I would just like to close today in saying, you know, Jesus took the initiative in gathering followers that knew him, but to bring them to him so that he could help grow their faith and make disciples that would continue on after he was gone. What are you doing in your life to share your faith with others and perhaps call others to you in a small group setting so that you could also make disciples and follow the call of the Great Commission? It might not be so hard as you might expect. And if you pray about it and feel led by the Holy Spirit, He will bring people into your life that you could create into a small group, bring together into a small group, and that, yes, even you could one day be a disciple maker just like Jesus Christ himself. Wow, what a calling. Well, I hope today's been a blessing to you. Tomorrow we're going to continue in the, uh, in the Gospels, and we're going to read more about Jesus and his life on this earth. I sure hope that you will continue to join me then. Shalom.